wanted it. No, we still don't want it. And frankly, we don't oh, even want to okay. be here right now. The only reason that we're here is because we feel that if we didn't come today and we didn't get our questions answered, that we would be walked all over as we have been since this whole thing started. We feel like we've been stepped on, that we've been taken advantage of, and um, that's why we're here. We want our questions answered. Um, there's uh, been a great injustice we feel done to us. Um, namely, when, um, the first thing um, that we wanted to address was the fact that the last meeting we came here, we had asked to be on the agenda. And we were scheduled to be on the agenda. And uh, we had been taken off the agenda because the curb problem, which we're going to go over, had been taken care of. The city intervened. They cut the curb back out. And so we um, were taken off the agenda because everything had been resolved. But according to us, it had not. We had not had our answers or questions answered. And we didn't feel that any accountability had been, um, had been served. And so we asked to remain on the agenda, and of course we were taken off the agenda. We came and had to speak in the citizens' input. We were not allowed to have a discussion. And then after we left, the FEDC talked about us when we were not on the agenda. And it was said that if, if the vis Veterans Business Park was on the agenda. So we were talked about under that category. But had that been the case, that you were always going to talk about Studio C, and at that point, then we should have been able to have a conversation and we should not have been denied the, uh, the opportunity to speak and have you speak back. The claim was altered before we signed the earnest money contract. <coughs> I brought it to the board. I told them that I was going to do that and I was going to inform the board of the changes in the business plan. I felt at that time that things had changed and we needed to discuss with them. Um, so we met with them on uh, different occasions here uh, at, at the FEDC. Um, they also claimed that I never responded to their calls, that I didn't take their messages. Uh, the last time I spoke with Christina directly was in the last part of uh, March. And after that, you know, she told me they had hired an attorney once I started questioning. So I didn't make any direct contact with them because that's what my attorney told me not to do. Um, the last time I spoke with Mr. Carson Bourne was uh, with the curb cut. <coughs> he wanted to know what had happened on the curb cut. I advised him at the time that they didn't have permission to cut the curb and that we would allow the one curb cut on Paloma Drive but not on Veterans Drive. What my board had done in March and April, the discussions that the board had, and after they were briefed that the plan had changed, they wanted to see if there were ways that we could limit what we believed to be the inconvenience that would result from having weddings, quinceaneras, and parties at night at the dance studio. The board wanted uh, to limit the hours of the uh, dances and things at the dance studio, uh, the weddings, quinceaneras, etc. And they initially had said 10 o'clock at night and also limit the parking. Our attorney had suggested we put in there uh, that they find some alternate ways to handle all the parking. Uh, consulting with their attorney, they came back and said that's not agreeable. Uh, we felt we had made a contract to sell the land, we were going to sell the land. And then, uh, so we altered the agreement, and the agreement said that, and they signed it before they signed the, for the property, that they would do everything they could to keep the, the events to at least midnight and to restrict the parking. On the curb, that, that uh, after they had cut it, I saw that they had taken that action and I felt I was doing the right thing and based on what the board had been advising me to do to, to uh, limit the inconvenience and to limit the parking on, uh, at the site. I advised the city manager that I was going to refill the curb. He knew what I was doing. Uh, no one told me not to do it. I had spoken with our city uh, inspectors and they said that once you submit a plan for a building, you get a permit to build a building. And then you have to submit another plan that, that is a civil plan that calls for parking lots, curb cuts, uh, driveways, etc. And I was told that had not been done. So I believe that I was acting in good faith. Uh, I had not done anything, you know, that the board hadn't said that I couldn't do. 
Uh, and as the executive director of the board, I felt that I was taking the correct action. Uh, in terms of me trespassing, there's a 15-foot easement before their property line. And if you look at the, on the deed, the, the area marked in yellow is not their property. Their property starts on the other side. And I think what the misconception is that, yes, they own the property, and if there's any easements on their one acre, they have the permission to say who can and cannot come on, and they coordinate with the city, the utility companies. But we placed all the utilities on this yellow area, and that's from the curb to their property line. I have never entered their property once we made the deal with them. I have stayed on this yellow area, and I will continue to do that because, you know, I don't go on private property unless I'm invited. Um, but I think there's a misconception. The property line starts after the yellow. Okay, now they control what's on their property. That's correct. You're extremely correct on that. And if you came on my property without permission, I would be as angry as you are. Uh, but the yellow area is not their property. And I'll pass that around for the board to see. That belongs to the FEC. We retain the rights to that property for uh, installation of utilities and then also to prevent any problems in the future. We have a water break, a utility line breaks or whatever. We have access to it without consulting the owners. Essentially, if not entirely that, no. again, exercise yeah, the um, land. And I can well, let me and, and, and so at some point in time, as he indicated, at some point in time, that changed, and, and whether it was the management, uh, business management advisor that we helped you get telling you to do it or not, it, in essence, changed the nature of the business to a great degree. And that's what, what then got the, the contention here, if you will, uh, going. Because we then, I think the board was pretty much in agreement, and you were there. Uh, and I guess, David, you were there, and I don't know if anybody else was. But in any event, uh, they were very concerned that, that this wasn't in keeping or compatible with the kinds of things that we had envisioned over there. So now, all of a sudden, you know, we, we've got to look at a different thing. So there was, you know, contention there. Uh, and, and I guess from your side, you saw a need to get an attorney. But see, the instigate, uh, or what instigated you to, to, to think or, or want to have an attorney was your doing, not our doing. You know, the fact that you changed significantly what we had considered as going to be there in a way that it wasn't in our mind compatible with our vision over there. So, so how, how can, can we be responsible for that? When in essence, the, the instigation for needing a lawyer came because of the significant change that was never approved beforehand by, by the board. Oh, I'll, 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 I'll answer that. that. Hold, on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh. <coughs> All right. Hold on. The <coughs> dance studio still has the same purpose. It is a dance studio. Now we do other things in there also. We have a karate class in there. We have, we'll have receptions. I mean, no way did we ever violate the contract. All right. We came. You guys asked us to come and say, what are your plans? It had evolved with our business plan advisor into what it is. We came and we presented and said why we were adding more things to it to make it survive. We later received a letter from the FEDC saying you are denied. What are we supposed to mean? What are, how are we supposed to take that when we see a letter that says you're denied? Does that mean that you're denied? We're not going to sell the grant. We're going to void the contract. We're going to breach the contract. We had a contract. There's one way out. Breach it or either go through with the contract. So we found we got an attorney to find out what our options were. Now, I understand that, right. Mr. Right. Goslin, but right. understand this, That's a that, that right. when I asked the question to Cindy, you know, I don't know all the rules and regulations about ordinances, etc. so I asked, do they have permission, did they get a permit, did they send, submit something to get the curb cuts? We don't have and I was told, no, they weren't. Now, if that's not a requirement from the city, and that needs to be spelled out, and I agree with the point, <coughs> that needs to be spelled out, and clearly, and, and, and I need to be informed of all of that. I'm better informed now than I was before. 
The okay. issue goes back to the, the contract was between FEDC and the horse. Once a city gets involved in it, we have no stipulations on what where curb cuts go. They submit their plans. The permitting portion of, of the city is sent to Bureau Board us for the building portion. The rest, utilities and all that was your responsibility. And you said that you all put the, the, the water, the wastewater and electricity and any other options there. So the issue was between you two. And that's why they were sent back and, and that was my advice to them from the <coughs> get-go. We don't know what agreements you had with ABDC on the sale of the property and you must go back to them. And as soon as he called about the issue, he was referred to the board president and that's the that's that's the involvement of the city. So for Cindy Nichols, our permanent officer, to be brought into the conversation when she's not here is not a problem. I have a question. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, so when who did Jesse call y'all to go and go ahead and cut the curb again? We had nothing to do with cutting the curbs or filling the curbs or nothing like that. Oh, so the city didn't do it? No. Okay, because she, she said well, once, about once the issue that, that to resolve the problem, the city was sent out there to remove the concrete that were placed in the curb. It was, it was nothing, you know, but to do But did Jesse ask you to do that or? During the issue of us reviewing what was going on in order to, uh, minimize any more issues yeah. between that PDC, that's the step that that's when I stepped in and I sent my crew out there and I said you go resolve that matter, remove that curve and that's it. Yes, ma'am. So we signed, we sold you the property, that issue has been resolved in my opinion. The issue with the curve, how much was the attorney's fees for the curve? You brought your attorney at that meeting. I'm assuming he charged you for that hour or two you were here. That's a totally different issue versus the, the contract. You see, we got an attorney up front. We were able to buy the land. We thought it was supposed to. We weren't going to bring it up. But then you bring another issue on us. You cut curb, uh, make us get an attorney because of the curb cut. So we have to pay an attorney a second time. That's when we start to think, you know what? They're making us, they are forcing us to get an attorney. <coughs> and when's this going to stop? You know what? You Two times now. You know what? I let the first one slide, but enough's enough. The second time that you do something where you didn't have the right to do it, and you do it anyways, and the way you did it, enough's enough. Okay. He, Mr. Fed, Colonel Fettis has addressed that. He's already mentioned that. We're just going back and back and over, you know. I just have one ahead. quick question, Mr. Warren. Clarify for me again, your attorney, you have, you hired when? We hired him to close, close the land. Close the land, okay. okay. And so then well, you just kept him on? No, no, it was a done deal. Okay. And then once we got the curb replaced, <coughs> we called him back. Called him back. Okay. So Thank what you. was your fee then? I don't know. Oh, from the start? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. So, uh, oh, wait. One okay. second. So, can I assume <coughs> then that that would be less than 3500 Is that right? Okay. Thank you. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Pettis, whenever you decided to go and uh, cut refill the, the or refill the curb, whatever, were, did you even try to notify them and let them know that you were doing this? No, I, I, I mentioned it to the you know, the city manager, when I asked to see if they had had permission from the, from the, you know, permits office, and I was told that they did not, and that they needed to submit a civil plan. Uh, so then I, uh, I mentioned to the city manager, he and I went out there, we looked at it, he was driving by, and he came by when I was looking at it. Uh, so at that time, uh, I told the city manager what I was going to do. Um, and uh, I thought I was, based on the discussions that the board had had before, and I believe Ms. Flores was there, Mr. Longoria, uh, and Sarah Mendoza, and I'm not sure if Becky Silva was president, as, and all the discussions. But the discussions were to try to uh, limit uh, the inconvenience or to keep traffic, limit traffic on Veterans Drive, which goes into the Veterans Home, 
and the, some of the concerns were that it might impact uh, emergency vehicles coming in and out uh, because it is a nursing home. And then also with the senior apartments, uh, seniors a little bit, you know, uh, they're not as easy to see things at night and if there's, you know, cars coming, etc. Too many cars, more of the traffic than is normally there, that was one of the concerns. Uh, but I thought I was, again, acting uh, on the fact that the board wanted me to, to do these things to contain the traffic and keep the nuisance down that area. Well, I think just to... Uh, and I believed uh, at that point that we were still in charge of managing that property to include the curbs and streets. But apparently, we're not, you know, so, uh, so, so that changes everything. Well, I think just as uh, maybe for the future or something, uh, maybe there should have been at least a call to them since they had already kind of purchased the land and stuff. Well, the way I saw it at the time, uh, they didn't call us to tell us that they were going to cut the curb. And I believe that the FEC still had responsibility for the curbs. Uh, we were not informed of that happening at all. Uh, I went out and I saw that the curbs had been cut. I was not told by anybody that they were going to do the curb cuts. Mr. Boyne didn't call me. Mrs. Boyne didn't just call me. Just the one that they should have cut. Just that one in the front there? No. Either one. Or either one. And they never told me that they were going to do it when they did it. Um, we submitted our plans with both curb cuts on them. <coughs> our plans got approved with both curb cuts on them. <coughs> and again, I'm only one boat, so I'm just talking here, you know, trying to... But ask anyway. me, and that's my... Yes, okay. It, so, EDC is not authorized to pay attorney fees, is that what you said? Yes. Okay. Without a, a judgment, I guess, is that what you're saying? Well, that would be a whole different matter. There would yeah. be a lawsuit. Right. No, in terms of an expense authorized by the, the Development Corporation Act, the article that you got and the bylaws, <coughs> in my legal opinion, is the city, the EDC is not authorized to pay those attorney's fees. Who pays your attorney's fees? Who pays your fees? Well, my fees would ultimately be paid by EDC. That's an employee so of EDC. Mr. Calhoun, my understanding, what I hear you saying is because of how the EDC is structured as a governmental entity that we really don't have that ability to That's take exactly care of it. Is that what I'm understanding? That's exactly okay. what I'm saying. That there are li okay. limitations or restrictions on what we can and can't yes. do. Thank you. I just want to make sure I understood it. Okay. And, and that's what I'm concerned because I'm, I'm willing to agree with you without prejudice, meaning I don't believe we did anything wrong, but, but I think we've spent enough time on this as a distraction. It's a deterrent to us continue to do good business. <coughs> we want to be cooperative to the extent that we can. But we've got a problem here as far as monetary compensation is concerned. Well, I guess the only place we can leave it is uh, I'll take it to my attorney. Mr. Bourne, what? I'm just listening to all of this and I'm, I'm just asking. Um, I'm saying that we both had an opportunity to speak to the situation and it is just my opinion, I'm not speaking for the entire board because I think they can all speak for themselves, but I'm hearing that there was miscommunication between entities, a misunderstanding, okay, whether there was a permit there wasn't, what was done, what wasn't, and it was really a misfortune. Uh, I personally apologize because I'm from this community and I really want well for this community. You're living in it, I know you want well for it. And so, personally, you know, I'm real sorry for all of the misunderstanding and for the confusion and all of the disruption to anything that might have caused you or anybody else. Um, I guess I'm asking at this point, having had the opportunity to converse and having heard, this is the first I've heard of it from Mr. Uh, Kavahal, um, you know, I, I guess I have the same question, are we, the first and foremost question was, can we do that, is it legal? I mean, we've got to abide by rules. So I did not have that information, and he I just informed me. <coughs> That's yeah. why I asked him the question I did, because I want to make sure I understand before I have to make a decision. And, and he just spelled it out that apparently we're not able to do that. 
having said that, I, I, I've heard an apology from uh, Mr. Pettis, and personally I apologize for any discomfort it might have caused you. I would love for us to go forward. Uh, everybody, the city, we're all trying to work together, and we're really trying to make progress with future businesses, with growth, and for things that are for our community, be it youth or be it the aged, it doesn't matter, anybody in between even. Would, I'm just asking, would that satisfy you? And by absolute all means, you can go back to your attorney. I mean, you can clarify anything you want, and I would urge you to, to do that to your satisfaction. Um, do you think you and Christina would be accepting of where we are today, and, and now you know why things happened the way it did, and how it happened, the reasons for it, and you've received an apology, and you've gotten clarification from the attorney? Does, have we met your concerns, and are you accept? Can you be accepting of that, or how do you feel? No, or where we? Pardon me. Until he was first. Okay. Uh, I apologize all day long. It doesn't give my money back. No, I understand that. I know though your wife had asked for that, and so I'm I'm just trying to make part of your request. And just please again understand, <coughs> our, we still want to continue being supportive of your facility. You know, overall the basic thought of it is great. We we hope you we hope for the very best for you and for our community. Um, is if there's anything we can still be helpful with, please let us know. Please know that you can come back to us with questions or thoughts or concerns. You are always welcome to come back. And uh, and I and I hope you will for for whatever reason you can be a part of it as, as you know the rest of the public and if you have any other concerns please make sure 